Okay. All right. So for this um, piece that I have here, this is, a, of course, an InDesign document, but it is five by seven postcard. So this is one of the more standard sizes of postcards that you can, uh, that you'll, you'll do in uh, direct mail, for instance. So it's just a two-page um, InDesign document, and it's single pages. So these are not facing pages like, like it would be for um, a magazine spread, okay? This is really basic, um, but really it's just for um, um, demonstration purposes. So on the back you have a mailing panel. Um, when you start doing mailers and stuff, you'll, be, you'll find... Um, uh, United States Postal Service templates that tell you how much space you need from one edge to the other for a mailing panel and how much blank space you need around the design um, and so on. So it's different size for different postcards. Uh, so this is more of a standard uh, size. But you can see here that I have um, some placeholder text. This is all text that is, um, it is just straight up created in InDesign and I put these carrots in here um, in the font that I like. You know, and, and you can change the fonts or whatnot, um, of course, just like on any normal InDesign document. So I have placeholder text here for first name, last name, address one, address two. So I'm taking into account that um, some addresses in my uh, mailer piece are going to um, have uh, like apartment numbers, for instance, or like a suite number. And then city, state, zip. So this is just your basic mailing panel. If you wanted... Um, uh, um, to have any other information there, you probably could, like an attention line or something like that. And if the attention line changes, then um, that could be something that you would change. So essentially, we're going to tie this block of text to a spreadsheet um, that will actually pull the content in um, variably, uh, depending on who would be receiving uh, uh, the mail piece, right? So then, so I can have one design, many variables of, of text to flow into the design and then export each version of that into a, a printable PDF that would run on a digital press. Now, so direct mail is really um, a digital, digital press based for the most part if it's, if it's personalized or variable. So if you remember when I said um, uh, digital printing is becoming more prevalent than, than um, offset printing, then this is why. It's really it's uh, really personalized to people as far as with direct mail is concerned. Um, so on the front of the postcard, I want first name and last name, you know, um, and then maybe, um, you know, maybe I want to say like, you know, hey or something. So it's going to like speak to the person, let's say perhaps. And in this area, I'm going to have uh, three images that are variable. So in my spreadsheet, I have a different name um, uh, with a different set of images and so my concept is based on what these folks order online there will be a, email, a direct mail piece sent to them uh, based on what their order was okay um, to just kind of remind them that we're here here's some pictures of the type of food that you ordered um, and then and then maybe they'll get another bite okay um, so let me go to the spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet basically um, has a column for your first name, a column for your last name, address one, address two. This is really um, basically standard. These, these fields here are basically standard in most of the contact lists that, that people will um, have in their um, teams internally. Um, usually you can export this from like a Salesforce or something, like if you're... Uh, uh, if you have a sales team that keeps up on these um, uh, spreadsheets, um, Salesforce will be able to export this content. But what the th pieces about the photos, the way I'm going to do the photos is I'm going to have this area here called photo one, photo two, photo three. So in these individual fields, I have these long um, file paths. And the file paths would look different between Mac and uh, Macs and um, and PC uh, machines, but it's basically saying that on my Macintosh uh, machine, under users, my name, on the desktop, so all this previous information is who I'm logged in as, etc. On my desktop, under the catering folder, I'm going to have an image here. And then the same kind of thing here, except I have a different image. So 
Um, I have different file paths with different image names. So I have a catering group, I have pizza group, and you can see here, and then I have uh, the sandwiches group. So there's three different photos in each of those subfolders. And just to show you kind of what it looks like, you can see here on my desktop that I'll have you know my catering folder with all my images. Um, here's my sandwich folder with all my images and pizza, all my images. So to figure out how um, th those file paths really um, um, look, is I'll open up the InDesign document. I'm just going to take one of the images and place it in. So I'm going to go to a file place on this first image box here. And under catering, I'm just going to select that first image and then I'm going to hit open. And so the image will place here and then under my links panel, I'll be able to see here the file path. So under links, you can see down here, it's going to say path. So this is basically what is identical to what's on my spreadsheet. So it says Pat Macintosh, HD, blah, 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 everything that it said before. So I'll delete this image uh, for now. So that's where the file paths uh, piece is coming from. Let me get the Excel spreadsheet open again. Um, the only other piece you need, is, now I can name these top uh, um, columns whatever I want, okay? Um, I'm just using address one to city state because that all makes sense to me, but you could have um, um, this say like photo pizza or whatever, or photo whatever. Um, for me, that just makes sense to have at photo one. But what you have to do um, in this uh, in this image field is actually type in a um, uh, a comma, or not a comma, it's a parentheses mark. So it's a parentheses mark, and then it's the at symbol, and then it's whatever name you want this to be in your spreadsheet. That's in the title of your header. Same for this. Um, it's com uh, it's a apostrophe, um, then it's at symbol, and then it's photo two, and then it's apostrophe photo uh, at symbol photo three. So then th this is actually what, what you have to name your um, uh, variable fields if you want your images. Uh, to kind of show up uh, from the spreadsheet uh, dynamically. All right, so I'll open up the postcard piece again, and then in InDesign, you would go over to Window to kind of map all these variables. And then under the Utilities tab, there's an option called Data Merge. So under Data Merge, when you click on it, you'll get this um, file menu here. And it really just says um, some instructions, kind of. So choose uh, select data source from the panel menu. Um, drag data fields from the menu to frames. Choose uh, uh, create merge document from the panel menu. <clears throat> so the panel menu they're referring to is this um, uh, hamburger menu up in the upper uh, right on the panel. So I'll just click it. And then under here, it says select data source. So I'll click Select Data Source, and I'm going to navigate to this Excel file. Now this is important besides the uh, um, apostrophe, at symbol, and then the name of the photo column um, uh, for the images. Um, you're going to want this Excel document to be a CSV file. Um, and you, so when you create a spreadsheet in Excel, you can save as a .CSV file, which means comma separated something, I'm not sure what V means, but um, that's really what you need to have this saved as. Um, so I'll hit open on that file. And then you can see here in the data merge that it's actually, and InDesign is actually reading all of the columns in the file, including the photo columns. And so the photo columns have this little photo image next to them, okay? So what you would want to do to merge these is you want to select on the design um, the object that you want uh, to map the data to. So first I want my first name uh, artwork here to match to the first name um, data file in the CX, uh, or uh, data column in the CSV file. So you actually click on it and it adds these double carrots to it. 
So I'll take my single carrots and it'll turn to double carrots. It doesn't really, you know, matter what you put in your design. Um, like if I wanted this to be first name, I would just select it and then click first name and it'll map that to be the first name in my CSV file. I'll just undo that. Um, but really, it doesn't matter what you want in your design. I just use the carrots because that's kind of what it looks like at the end anyway. So it helps me kind of understand what I'm doing. So essentially here, my first names in the spreadsheet are going to populate into the first name area here and then the last name area here. Okay. And then um, on the back of the card, I can do the same thing. So I'll select first name, map it to first name, last name, map it to last name. This is almost like applying styles, really. I mean, you're just kind of selecting the content and then clicking on the data merge column uh, to really link each piece of data together. And I'm going in city, state, Again, like uh, these columns in, um, uh, in my CSV file don't necessarily have to be the exact name. Um, it's just whatever name's easiest for you to remember. But I just use basically what, what it's saying here. So photo one, I'll just click on that. Photo two, click. So you would just actually select the image box and then click on the uh, whatever whatever image you want mapped to this area. Um, it could be a full background. I mean, just think of like any image you really want that, that needs to be variable in the piece you can do. So uh, to preview this, you can preview this data by checking the preview box here. And then now it's going to preview what this first card is going to have. So down here, you see there's like a little tiny number one. So I can actually page through the different, the different designs. So here was, is two. <laughs> so this guy ordered pizza last time we had contact with him with one of our salespeople or we rang him up and then his data, or maybe it was online, like he ordered online. That, that information was saved to um, our database somewhere. And then um, our designer said, okay, anyone that ordered, you know, pizza, here's the photos that we'll put in there, whatever. Um, okay. And then here's his first name, last name, and so on and so forth. So then here's pizza. And then on the back, you can see here's his, his contact information. And then the next person is Beatrix. And so she did sandwiches. So I have three different sets of content for all these different people, right? So Deborah is a pizza person. And then who's next? Aditi, Aditi uh, is a sandwich person. So you can turn the preview on or off, but what, uh, and actually you'll have to essentially turn the preview off if you want to um, export this. But what you'll do is go up to the, um, this data merge menu here on the right. And um, one of the things that I uh, like to mess with is this content placement options area. So this is actually going to tell you how your images can place in the frame. Instead of me going to the uh, source images and then sizing them exactly into this box size, I can actually use, um, if you remember how to fit content in the frame proportionally in some of your image boxes. Um, you can do that here too and it'll just treat all the images the same. So I can say, um, you know, fit images proportionally. And then that would, that would change the images up um, to fit proportionally. Let me see. I'll have to turn it off again. So I'll turn the preview off and then turn it back on. And then all the images placed are fit proportionally. It's not really what I'm looking for, so I'll go back under content placement options. And it actually defaults to fit images proportionally. Um, so you'll want to go um, fill frames proportionally. And then maybe center it in the frame too, just so everything is like filling the frames. There's no, there's no um, uh, black border area or anything like that. So I'll turn the preview off, turn it back on. 
and then and then that's kind of what I'm expecting. So any kind of uh, image or or something like that, uh, perhaps even the logo could change if I was a brand owner that had a bunch of different brands, and I had a huge database full of just people that managed all my brands. Maybe that logo would swap out too or something, and that could be something that you might you know want to do in the in a design too. Maybe it's very general, like a general look for a postcard, and you're running like a website that sells postcards to like small businesses or something and then you're saying hey you can jump on the website upload all your content and then we'll spit out on the other end a, a postcard that sends to your mailing list that you upload etc anyhow um, so what I'll do is um, you can't really do anything with this until you export it um, as a PDF so then they can run this on a digital press so you would go up to this uh, file menu here, and then you would say, um, uh, let's see, export, to export to PDF. So the export to PDF option will turn the preview off here, and you can export all your records, um, or you can export a range. Um, so I have probably like 16 records, but instead of exporting all of them, I'm just going to do like three. Another option you can do is if you had a um, uh, template for like stickers, let's say, like you had a bunch of stickers on an 8.5 by 11 sheet that you can get from like Avery or something at the store, you could actually export this layout using, using these options here, or actually which is this multiple record layout, and you can define the margins on the left, right, top, down. Um, and so on, so then you can do a repeat of, of these graphics on a single page. Um, so that's, that's an option too. I've had to do it for like name tags or something. Um, that could be an option too, you know. Um, okay, so anyway, we're exporting this whole document um, just like it is here. So range one through three, so um, I'll just do the first three records and then go okay. And here's where you can um, of course, your typical export PDF uh, uh, screen. I'm going to do um, high quality print for now. Um, it'll take a little bit longer, but um, once it's done, this would be print ready. Um, so uh, you can do your printer marks, so crop marks, um, and then you can turn your bleeds on. So these images actually bleed off the edge. Um, so uh, so when this thing is produced, it'll, um, it'll be nicely finished. Uh, and then that's it. So no export. And then you just pick where you want to save this at. Uh, yeah, print. And then so it's going to go through and, um, and basically generate all of this PDF for you. So you essentially will walk away, come back. It actually has to has to uh, uh, place all of the images like in a single PDF, and then map all the data. The images are the bigger part. So if you have a lot of images, uh, it'll take a little bit longer. So then, what what it says here is no overset text was generated when merging records, which means that if I had like a super long name here, and then it pushed it pushed um, the data all the way down outside this bounding box. I'll show an example of that. And then I'll open up the PDF to show you uh, in a second what happens. So if I had a, like a, a last name like this, so like something like that, I'll save it. And I'll go back to this file, turn my preview on, and then go update data source. So I'll update the data source now. And then this person, oh, that, it was record one, so let me go back to record one. Uh, it wasn't quite long enough. Um, let me go ahead and make it longer. Uh, 
Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's nice. So, uh, in fact, there was someone um, that was saying, couldn't you do like a catalog just based on variable data imagery? And I thought to myself, yeah, potentially, because if you had the same amount of objects laid out in your catalog and the same amount of objects laid out in the spreadsheet, and you just had links to images, then theoretically someone could upload, upload their images to your website, let's say your catalog creating website, upload um, the spre uh, a spreadsheet of like information, like body copy and stuff, and then you could then map the images in a spreadsheet in a kind of more automated way, and then um, maybe produce a catalog for them, you know, and then send it, mail it to them or something for a fee. So here, um, I just want to show an example of like overset text here. See, so here, so the, my first name, and it's something to keep in mind. My first name and last name was really long, so it kind of broke the bounding box. So that's what it would mean if, if there was overset text when I exported it. InDesign would warn you that you have overset text that, um, uh, on one of your PDF files and it's kind of broken. So it's kind of nice there, it's sort of a fail safe. So, but here what you would have is, um, here's your, uh, I'll open up the pages panel in, in uh, Acrobat. So here you have a file, um, essentially that's just front and back four different postcards. Okay, so here's front and back of postcard one, front and back of pizza postcard two, and then front and back of sandwiches postcard three. And if I was, you know, patient enough, I would export all 19 or 20 of them. And then it would be a PDF of like, you know, um, uh, 40 different um, pages. And then so the designer would send this to the printer, say, hey, um, here's my final art. Um, I need four, uh, I'm sorry, three front and back postcards, five by seven with bleed, CMYK color. And then they would char and they would run the job, and and that would be it. They would put it in the mail and everything else. They would put their stamp on there and everything. Okay. So um, essentially, you don't have to really have this uh, information for a.